If you could spend one day in the year 20, 100, what would you expect to find? The idea of glimpsing the future with its distant time frames has intrigued humanity for millennia. What if you could peer even further ahead? 1,000, 10,000, a million, or even a billion years into the future. What would the universe look like? What momentous events would unfold over these vast spans of time? What would we overlook? To begin on Earth, there's the well-known case of Chernobyl, which, in summary, involved a catastrophic explosion at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in Ukraine on April 26, 1986, releasing over eight tons of radioactive material into the surrounding area the city has become practically uninhabitable because the Chernobyl zone remains highly radioactive. It will not be safe to live in until the year 22,000. Unfortunately, by then, you and I will probably be dead, and we won't be able to ride the Ferris wheel we've been waiting 20,000 years for. In 50,000 years, the Earth's rotation will slow down due to lunar tides caused by the moon. This could lead to the need to add a leap, second to the clock every day, which could become quite a hassle in reality, or we may have to officially make our days one second longer. On a clear night, you can go outside and admire the celestial milk crops in the sky. If you have experience, you can even identify some constellations and individual stars. However, in 100,000 years, the Earth and our solar system will orbit the galaxy at such a great distance that the star patterns we see today will look completely different. By this time, Mars should be fully terraformed making it possible to observe the stars from the new planet. For a variety of good reasons, it would be wise to reach Mars as soon as possible. In particular, there is a high probability that in 500,000 years, the Earth will collide with an asteroid with a diameter of more than one kilometer. An asteroid of this magnitude would probably create a crater exceeding 400 kilometers in diameter, leading to massive global fires and rendering the air almost unbreathable. If that isn't enough to motivate you to consider leaving Earth, then perhaps this will change your perspective. In one million years, it's highly probable that our planet will experience a super volcanic eruption of such scale that it would cover over 3,000 cubic kilometers with searing magma. This volume of magma could fill roughly 75% of today's Grand Canyon. The last super volcanic eruption comparable to this event would likely be the Toba super eruption, which was so powerful that it plunged the world into a decade-long global volcanic winter. Nearly all vegetation on Earth was devastated, and scientists estimate that this single event nearly wiped out human life. Estimates suggest that only 3,000 to 10,000 human individuals survived the Toba eruption. If you've been following this channel for a while, you're likely aware of my video discussing the Kardashev scale, a theoretical framework for ranking civilizations based on their energy capabilities. It's projected that in one million years, if humanity has endured and progressed, we could potentially reach type three civilization status. A type three civilization would wield all the power within its entire galaxy, implying the ability to harness the energy of all the stars and the Milky Way galaxy as a whole. However, if humanity has successfully terraformed Mars, the next challenge may arise in 50 million years. It is believed that the orbit of Mars's moon Phobos will become destabilized, causing it to plunge into the Martian atmosphere and ultimately be torn apart by tidal forces. The result of this event could be Mars acquiring a ring system akin to Saturn's present-day rings, but these rings might not be everlasting. Saturn and its moons exert a substantial gravitational influence. Therefore, in approximately 100 million years, it's highly plausible that the rocks and debris constituting Saturn's rings could be drawn in or ejected from the system, leaving Saturn devoid of its iconic rings. In 240 million years, from our current position, our solar system will have completed one full orbit around the Milky Way's galactic center which is a truly mind-boggling perspective. About 240 million years ago, when dinosaurs first roamed the Earth on the supercontinent called Pangaea, it coincided with the completion of the last galactic orbit. Speaking of supercontinents, it's anticipated that in 250 million years, all of Earth's land masses will likely merge to form a new supercontinent, Pangaea, Ultima. It's estimated that this supercontinent will persist until the year 500 million, during which time life on Earth may confront another extinction event. When stars reach the end of their life cycles, 
they often explode in a phenomenon known as a supernova. Supernovas typically release incredibly intense beams of radiation called gamma ray bursts. Gamma ray bursts are among the brightest and hottest events in the universe. Our sun continuously emits about 3.8 x 10, 26 watts of energy per second, a process that has been ongoing for the past 4.75 billion years. In contrast, a gamma ray burst releases more energy in 30 seconds than our sun will emit during its entire 10 billion year lifetime as of the year 500 million. The likelihood of a gamma ray burst occurring within 6,500 light years of Earth is extremely high. Such an event originating from that distance could swiftly devastate up to half of the Earth's ozone layer. This would lead to mass extinction among both terrestrial and aquatic creatures, resulting in widespread starvation. This marks the onset of a grim future for our cherished blue planet. If life still persists on Earth, in 800 million years, it faces its final moments. By this time, Earth's CO2 levels will have declined to a point where photosynthesis becomes impossible. Without photosynthesis, there will be no more oxygen production, and consequently, no more multicellular life. Earth would be reduced to a lifeless barren wasteland, much like it was some four billion years ago. It's possible that life may exist on other planets by that time. In 1977, NASA launched two spacecraft, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, on trajectories that will eventually take them beyond our solar system into interstellar space. Both spacecraft carried identical golden records, each of which is enclosed in a protective aluminum jacket along with a cartridge and needle for playing it. The records contain symbolic instructions detailing the spacecraft's origin within the solar system and how to play the record. These golden records hold 115 images from Earth greetings in 55 languages, sounds from our planet, and even music from the era when Voyager was launched, among the 27 songs on the golden record. One of the most iconic and moving tracks is number 26, Dark Was the Night, by Blind Willie Johnson, who was diagnosed with a disability and blinded at a young age. Indeed, Blind Willie Johnson's music was well received and he enjoyed some popularity during his time, but he remained relatively impoverished. His life is poorly documented, and the only known image of him is this one. Yet, track 26, Dark Was the Night, carries the immense weight of the entire human species on a profound journey into the vastness of space. Its poignant representation of humanity, a species characterized by its curiosity and insatiable desire to explore the universe. We venture into the cosmos at a speed exceeding 17 kilometers per second, much like Blind Willie, a man with modest possessions and limited knowledge of the world around him. This symbolizes our collective yearning to uncover the mysteries of the universe, even in the face of our limited understanding of what lies beyond. Like Blind Willie Johnson, we are often blind to what lies beyond our immediate surroundings. The golden records aboard the Voyager spacecraft serve as a message from humanity to any potential alien civilizations that might come across them. In the same way, this image of blind Willie Johnson represents a snapshot of who we are. Renowned astronomer Carl Sagan was part of the research team responsible for curating a representation of Earth to include on the golden records. And he chose Johnson's song for its evocative portrayal of a situation Johnson often faced, nightfall with no hair to sleep. Since humans first appeared on Earth, the cover of night has never fallen without touching a man or woman in a similar plight. The struggles of humanity, expressed through music, may be one of the first and last things that alien civilizations ever hear from us.